Baku weekend started like this. And 15 and the wall are out. And once again, no margin. Even goes on the brakes. Pushing too hard. So did the crash of Sonoda catch Carlos's attention? And ended like this. Sergio Perez wins the Azerbaijan Grand Prix! Didn't I tell you that Baku was going to be an exciting weekend? Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, welcome, I hope you are well. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, it's really really appreciated. Thank you everyone for all of your support. I thought the F1 2021 championship was over. The moment that Max Verstappen's tyre went bang. <sighs> Charles Leclerc put it on pole on Saturday. He did quite a good time and Ferrari's pace was really good over one lap. And then Yuki Tsunoda crashed and then Carlos Sainz crashed and the qualifying ended early. The start of the Grand Prix was perfect for Charles. He had an amazing getaway. Unfortunately, the Ferrari just wasn't quick enough. Ferrari were really open about it. They said over a qualifying pace, we're really good. Race pace, different story. And it wasn't long before Lewis, Max and Sergio all overtook him. We had the pit stops and Lewis unfortunately got held up, which meant that he had to stay back about two seconds, something daft like that. Then when Max came to pit, he came out in front of Lewis. And then when Sergio came to pit, even with a wheel gun issue, he still came out ahead of Lewis. What a perfect drive from Sergio though. He spent most of the Grand Prix with a certain Lewis Hamilton in his wing mirror. Sorry, I had to correct that. It was really annoying me. There's a light here just beaming above my head. It was so annoying. Where was I? Sergio spent his whole race pretty much with Lewis Hamilton in his wing mirror. And what an amazing drive from Sergio. He seems to have found his rhythm with the Red Bull. I don't think he's as quick as Max, but he's doing enough for what Red Bull need. An horrendous accident for Lance Stroll. His left rear failed and he went plummeting into the barrier. It was so scary. I was really worried that he wasn't all right, but thankfully he was absolutely fine. His car on the other hand, not too good. At that point we had a safety car and I was a little bit confused as to why the teams wouldn't think to pit. Now I know some of the teams, the back marker teams did pit, but I guess it's kind of one of those things. If one of them pits, then the others will, but it really wasn't worth the chance for some of the teams with what happened to Lance. And I know Pirelli were like, look, it's cool and the gang, okay, we got this, we know it's gonna be fine. Race went back underway. Max was enjoying his time. And then the World Championship was about to come to an end. That is a 200 mile an hour crash for Max Verstappen. Left rear puncture for Max Verstappen on lap 49 of 51. Oh, she's wrong. Look, right, I try and be fair with how I do these videos. I do have my favorites, but I try and keep that out of it. But for the championship, that was gutting. You cannot DNF against Lewis Hamilton. Not in a million years would anyone go, oh yeah, yeah there's just one DNF, don't, don't worry about it. No, worry about it. He knew his little face, everything. He kicked the wheel. I don't know what the wheel was going to do, but from someone who enjoys watching them to race, it was gutting. And a big, big, big thumbs up to Red Bull. Jonathan Wheatley contacted the FIA over the radio and said, look, we have no information about that. We had no inkling that that was going to happen. And neither did Max. You need to red flag this race. And they did. They red flagged it so everyone could take on new tyre compounds, which was the safest thing to do. Probably come with a new compound this, this season and it's thicker. We've got two fast paced races after this race. We've got France and Austria and it's really worrying what might happen. 
obviously they'll do tests, investigate into it, but that could have been horrendous. Max's wasn't too bad, but it was at high speed. We got to restart the race. Sergio Perez was in P1. Lewis Hamilton, P2. When they were on the grid, you could see Lewis's tyres or more like his brakes were overheating. There was so much smoke coming out of them. Apparently he left something magic on, magic something, which helps to heat the tyres up on formation laps. He did it by accident and when the first corner came, he outbraked himself and ended up going down the escape road. It was gutting. I mean, Mercedes weekend was just horrific, but that was just icing on the cake. Both Mercedes didn't score at all. It opened the championship, the driver's championship back up, which is good for people who enjoy the sport, but the two championship contenders didn't score any points. What would have been the chances of me saying to you before the Baku Grand Prix that I think Sergio Perez is going to win and Sebastian Vettel is going to be P2. Would you have even believed that? The second Red Bull being competitive? Sebastian Vettel being competitive in a car in 2021? Guess what? A brilliant victory for Sergio and it just seems like everything is kind of coming together for Sergio and Red Bull finally have a second driver that can compete with Max. Maybe not as quick but definitely up there with him and he managed to keep Lewis behind him. Fantastic drive from Sergio and Seb. You know, look, people have just said it's over for Seb. He's not going to do very well. Him and that car are harmonising and they're doing really well. P2. P2. Aston Martin's first podium on their return. And, you know, it was so lovely because everyone was so, so happy. The Both the teams. Aston Martin, obviously, their boys were really close to Sergio because of how long Sergio had been with them for um previously and they all embraced him everyone embraced everyone and lovely to see pierre gasly on the podium as well a driver that's just been top notch all season he's absolutely incredible a team is going to snap him up if red bull don't put him in that place but i can't see them doing that with sergio if he continues to be this good a shout out for Kimi Raikkonen who scored his first point of the season he got p10 I'm sure he was ecstatic and Fernando Alonso p6 wonderful drive Alpine weren't too sure even Fernando said we weren't that quick Ock and his teammate had to retire with car issues but superb to see Fernando back there going to q3 and P6 in the end. The Ferrari boys, we had Leclerc in P4. Obviously it's a bit gutting because he did start on pole, but that was about as best as they were gonna get. They were fighting with Pierre, but Pierre just managed to get it in the end. Carlos went off on a mission to a different part of the racetrack and had to recover it. He ended up having to reverse. And do you know what? P8 is good considering what happened to him. I think he did a really good job. So good points for Ferrari, McLaren, Daniel Ricciardo in the points, fantastic. He had a very iffy qualifying, he, he hit the wall, um, which was sad to see. He is slowly getting to grips with the McLaren, but I think it's really important to remember that he's not gonna be out there and performing until next season. He might do all right this year, but you know, a good solid result for him P9 and P5 for Lando Norris as well. Not as good as he has been, but good points for them. And not a bad day for Haas. Both their drivers finished above Lewis Hamilton. I mean, that's good for Haas. I'm praising Haas. It's a new thing. I'm getting used to it. So how does the Drivers' Championship look? Well, Max is still in the lead. Both top two, Lewis and Max, failed to score any points that they stay exactly the same. Sergio Perez with the magic number 69 is in P3. Lando Norris has bumped himself down because he didn't get as many points as Sergio, obviously Sergio won. Charles Leclerc is in P5 and P6 is a Valtteri Bottas who really should have took the hint when his plane had issues. Like, 
someone was telling him, "Hun, stay at home. It's not good. It's not good. Just sit down, have a brew, stay at home." So next, we're off to France. Vive la France. We're off to France, and then Austria back-to-back -back races. I am a little bit concerned with the Pirelli tyres. Obviously, France is a very fast track, and those tyres are going to be put under a lot of pressure. It's normally not that much of an interesting race, and I don't think it's going to be that much of an interesting race, but watch out for my preview of that, and I'll give you a bit more in depth. For now, let me know in the comments what you thought of the race. Did you enjoy that race? Was it difficult to watch for some of you? I know that you know, Max and Lewis both have massive amount of fans and it's probably quite difficult to watch them not score. Did you enjoy the change again on the podium? Is it good for Formula 1 that we're having different drivers on the podium? And what do you make of the tyre situation? Are you concerned? Do you think the tyres should be open for other tyre manufacturers to come in? Let me know in the comments what you think. Thank you all so much for watching. Have a wonderful week and I will see you all very soon. Take care. Bye bye.